The overall goal of this procedure is to visualize patterns of mRNA expression in developing fetal mouse lower urogenital tract tissues. This is accomplished by first synthesizing a digoxygenin labeled riboprobe from a PCR generated template. The second step of the procedure is to generate thick cut sections using a vibrating microtome. The third step is to conduct an in situ hybridization in lower urogenital tract sections contained in customized baskets. The mRNAs are visualized through immunohistochemical detection of bound riboprobes using BM purple precipitating alkaline phosphatase substrate. Ultimately, microscopy can show the spatial and temporal localization of low and high abundance mRNA transcripts in the fetal mouse lower urogenital tract. The main advantage of this technique over existing methods, like immunohistochemistry, is that riboprobes are easy to generate and can be made to recognize most mRNAs in the entire mouse genome. Though this method provides insight into mRNA expression patterns during fetal mouse genital urinary development, it can also be applied to other organ systems, species, and developmental stages. Visual demonstration of this method is critical as embedding the tissue in agar can be difficult to learn, and because slight variations in orientation can lead to inconsistent results. At least one day before preparing the tissue, remove and discard the membrane from a 12 mm diameter millicell culture plate while insert. The remaining ring will function as a mold. Soak the rings overnight in RNA's inhibitor solution. On the day of the protocol, dissect a mouse lower urogenital tract that has been rehydrated with graded methanol PBS tween washes. Discard approximately two thirds of the bladder and store the remaining lower urogenital tract tissue in PBS tween. Now, Place a treated ring mold on a glass microscope slide and fill it with 4% low melt agarose solution at 62 degrees Celsius and allow it to cool for about 2 minutes. Now, blot dry the lower urogenital tract tissue and submerge it in the agarose solution. Use forceps to orient the tissue so that it is suspended halfway between the top and bottom of the ring mold. Incubate at 4 degrees Celsius until the agarose has solidified. Prior to slicing the tissue, prepare a customized Wilkinson blade by rinsing with solvents followed by water. Separate the double blade lengthwise into two single blades. Next, support the Wilkinson blade with a microtome blade. To do this, First cut the microtome blade to the length of the Wilkinson blade. Then, using a Loctite adhesive, glue the microtome blade to the Wilkinson blade, offset from the cutting edge by about 3 to 4 millimeters. Now, mount the reinforced blade in the vibrating microtome and set the blade angle to 35 degrees. Prepare the deluxe specimen bath by filling the bath with PBS and packing wet ice around it. Before mounting the tissue embedded in the plug, remove it from the ring mold and blot dry the bottom surface. Then, glue the dried surface to the mounting disc using Loctite adhesive. Insert the disc into the vibratome and adjust the section thickness to 50 microns, the speed to 2, and the blade amplitude to 4. While cutting tissue sections, use blunt forceps to transfer each section to a 24 well culture plate filled with half a milliliter of ice cold PBS tween. After slicing, remove most of the agarose from around each tissue section using spring scissors. Prior to beginning the in situ hybridization, the sections can be stored for up to 48 hours at 4 degrees Celsius in PBS tween containing 2 millimolar sodium azide. First, make custom sample baskets by cutting the bottom off a microcentrifuge tube at the 100 microliter mark. Heat the cut edge of the tube in a flame until the plastic is soft. Then, 
Firmly press the soft plastic onto a mesh square, allow it to harden and trim the excess mesh. Complete the baskets by using a heated 18 gauge needle to pierce two holes into each tube lid. Make a tray to hold the sample baskets by drilling 24 evenly spaced 12mm holes into the lid of a 24 well plate. Each hole should be positioned directly over a well. Before beginning, start preheating a covered hybridization chamber filled with half an inch of tap water to 60.5 degrees Celsius. Begin the in situ hybridization by adding 2 ml of PBS tween to each well of the 24 well culture plate. Cover this plate with the prepared lid loaded with baskets. Now, transfer tissue sections into the baskets. At room temperature with rocking, incubate the sections in 6% hydrogen peroxide with PBS tween, followed by a series of washes with PBS tween an incubation with proteinase K, another fixation, and more washes. To finish preparing the samples, add 2 ml of the pre-warmed pre-hybridization buffer to each well and incubate the plate inside the heated hybridization chamber for at least one hour. Initiate the hybridization by adding 0.5 micrograms of labeled riboprobe to each well. Then, Continue the incubation overnight inside the heated hybridization chamber. The next day, wash tissues with solution 1, gradually changing to solution 2, then treat with RNAs, then wash in solution 3, followed by washes in TBS tween and tissue blocking buffer. While the tissues are incubating in tissue blocking buffer, begin a minimum two hour incubation of the anti-DIG antibody in antibody absorption buffer at four degrees Celsius. After the incubation period, spin down the antibody solution at 10,000 RPM for a minute to remove insolubles. Add the supernatant to two milliliters of antibody solution buffer. Now, remove the tissue from the blocking buffer and incubate them in the prepared antibody solution. Keep them in a hybridization chamber overnight at 4 degrees Celsius. On the third day of the procedure, wash the tissues several times in TBST with levamisole. Then, using a glass pastel pipette, carefully transfer the tissues into clean microcentrifuge tubes. Wash the tissues for 10 minutes with 1 milliliter of NTMT then replace the solution with NTMT containing levamisole and BM purple. Place the tubes in the dark and, over the next several days, monitor colour development and change the solution as needed. After full colour development, briefly wash the tissues with NTMT containing levamisole and then incubate them overnight at 4 degrees Celsius in PBS containing paraformaldehyde. The next day, bleach and wash the tissues. The sections are now ready for imaging. The lower urogenital tract tissue was embedded in agar such that the urethral midline was parallel to the flat surface of the agarose plug. This orientation yielded sagittal sections. Custom-made sample baskets protected the delicate tissue sections from dust and particulate matter during the multi-day in situ hybridization procedure. They also prevented loss of any sections. It is challenging to limit background staining during the long incubations required to detect low abundance mRNAs. However, the addition of sodium azide and subsequent filtration appears to have limited background staining. Furthermore, there were no visible differences in background staining when samples were incubated in color development solution for prolonged time periods. Once mastered, this technique can be completed in six days if it is performed properly. Following this procedure, other methods like immunohistochemistry can be performed 
to determine if the mRNA's expression pattern correlates to the protein's expression pattern. After watching this video, you should have a good understanding of how to visualize mRNA expression patterns in the developing mouse lower urogenital tract.